Alrighty, so, in today's video, I want to go over the training cave. Uh, I know I'm two weeks late on this, and I should have already made this video by now, but uh, I'm kind of glad I waited because I feel like I've gotten a much better understanding of how to actually do training cave at this point. So, um, the first thing I want to talk about is, like, if you want to optimize your training cave or training grotto, uh, as much as possible you want to start this at a decent time of the day when you know you're going to be available so that way in five days whenever it resets you can run it as soon as it's available again because it doesn't it's not like uh, this doesn't reset like on a specific day at a certain time um, it resets according to when you did it last so if I were to if I were to do it today, right now, it's 2 p.m. In five days, at 2 p.m., it's going to unlock again uh, if I complete it. And then uh, I would need to go in and do it again. And, like, if I end up not being available at 2 p.m. in that day or whatever, uh, it's going to end up hindering me. And I'm going to lose out on some of the uh, rewards because, like, I'll lose time. Whereas if I did it right there at 2 p.m., it'll be available, you know at five days after that at 2 p.m. So there's a lot of optimizing that you can do for this. I, I'm not that worried about it. Like obviously the hammers and stuff are really nice, but I'm just going to do this when I have the chance. But just so you know, if you want to optimize it, you can do that. So yeah. So when it's available, obviously you just use your little stone and you get into the, or like you open it up. And so you have seven days to complete it. I think it's, yeah, so it recharges after five days. But if you don't beat it within, like if you don't actually complete the whole thing within seven days, it's going to reset on you anyway. So we're going to enter. And the big thing here is that there's a crystal at the top that we're going to be trying to fill up. Uh, here are our goddess ambers that we're going to be taking on. Uh, we have two green, one blue, and then two uh, green as well. So we actually have two level threes. I thought there was only going to be one level three at a time but looks like there can be more than one so the thing is over here on the right you can see a little like tr the training reward meter uh, you only get nine runs so to, to maximize your efficiency here if you really want to get the most out of your runs you're gonna want to try to do these level three fights as much as possible because they're gonna fill up the uh, the illusion amber up here like the most and obviously the more you fill up the illusion amber and you beat the actual stage that's tied to the illusion amber you're going to get more rewards and stuff out of that so obviously this requires a ton of characters because the idea behind training cave is that each time you use a character it gets locked and you can't use that character again uh, you can use them for association which is really nice but you won't be able, like if I use Escanor in my first fight on my first team, I'm not going to be able to use Escanor for the rest of this training cave attempt. Not until like it actually resets. So uh, if you really want to optimize it, go for the higher ones if you have the teams and stuff like that. But be aware that when you do the Illusion Amber fight, you're fighting one of your own teams. And if you use up your really, really strong people, it's gonna you're going to have to fight those characters and you're going to have to have a team that can you know fight your own stuff so just be aware so I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna try to go for a level 2 fight I'm I don't have enough characters to do like all level 3 fights it's just out of the question um, but what's nice about this is is it's all ungeared so you can literally just you know make your team based on uh, like whatever you need it to be like just worry about like I've been worrying about getting my box up as much as possible, so that's really all you need to worry about is leveling up your characters to UR. Uh, I don't recommend spending a whole bunch of SSR medals or anything like that, or SSR pendants trying to get them up any higher than they already are at level 60, uh, especially if they're not very good characters. Obviously, if they're good characters, uh, you could potentially you know, raise them up and then use them later, but I wouldn't prioritize training K or training grotto as like your your number one activity unless you're just a PvE player and that's what you want to do I mean go for it but yeah just work on like leveling up your box farm a bunch of uh, the equipment and stuff like that that it uh, the up like the upgrade materials that it takes to awaken your uh, characters because obviously that's gonna help a lot since you don't actually use gear at all in this so um, for this fight I think I'm going to use just some random kind of characters. I, I, I'm using Escanor as my like big character here. 
and then I'll try to put in some other characters that aren't really all that great but my idea here is I want to meet the CC requirement for this and then um, take it from there okay so let's hop in and see what this fights about obviously all of the gyms are gonna be different fights um, well they're not, I don't think they're all different fights but um, a lot of them are gonna be different the level 3 bosses are the ones where there's actually like you know big like big deals like you're gonna have to actually like strategize a little bit with those and try to figure out your best approach um, there's actually guides out there that show which which boss is tied to which gym and you know whether or not you should do or like which characters you should kind of use on those but uh, I'm not really like I don't have like a whole lot of characters and stuff like that built up that are super super built so uh, we're just gonna kind of worry about doing level ones and level two crystals at the moment which I think I overcompensate. I always end up overcompensating on these uh, early missions. Don't like. Don't be afraid to use some of your crappier characters and stuff like that. Just because you know a lot of these early ones are really easy as long as you're like I mean, asking or literally just two turn to that. So you know, be aware of that. Which I mean, so it does cost stamina to run like each. Uh, each actual battle but at the same time if you lose it's not going to take those characters away from you you can retry as many times as you want with those same characters it's only if you win that the character actually gets taken away so it's actually kind of nice because you can you know play around with it and you know see what works for you or try different teams and you can get a feel for the battle like i would i would say go in with characters that you don't think can do it first and if they do it then you're good but if if not then kind of bump up some of your characters and move the team around so that way you're not wasting a lot of really good characters early um and stuff that you could use up later on okay so that's the end of that fight uh it just takes some that hey, that guy's actually just really tanky obviously some of the characters are going to have sort of like gimmicks to them and everything like that you can see we're at two fights out of the total nine as soon as we do our next fight we get two free anvils for that which is nice so if you can actually make your way through all nine fights uh, and you have the characters for it just even if you're just doing level ones like getting these free 10 anvils each week is going to be kind of nice because i mean that's two ssr pieces that you can kind of like increase the stats of so you know keep that in mind uh, it looks like we're getting roughly like a little over 20% per two-star crystal, so that's not terrible. Uh, we'll be able to do, uh, I think it'll take three more pretty much for us to get an Illusion Amber, so I guess we'll just keep trying to do level twos for the moment. Um, I can Certain level threes I can deal with, uh, but it really just depends on like which ones they are. Uh, I actually don't have a ton of like good red characters. But uh, I'll try one really quick just to see how that goes. Um, but obviously, they're going to give you the most rewards, like, or it's going to give you the most percentage and everything like that. But obviously, uh, it's going to be a lot tougher. Like, sir, I, I remember fighting a giant last week that, uh, like, if you used your ultimate gauge on him, but it, or like, yeah, if you use your ultimate skill or something like that. Uh, and it doesn't kill him he gains back like a ton of no it was if you use an ultimate skill and it depl or if you use a decrease skill rank card on the character or on the boss and it's not uh, and it doesn't kill him he gains back a ton of health or something like that like it was something kind of annoying because I was using I think I was using Lilia or something like that so every time I ulted with her he gained a ton of health back so that was super annoying, but uh, I don't know. Just different ones have obviously different sorts of gimmicks and stuff like that. So we're going to try this one out really quick. All right, so, so far, it's only been like two turns. He has his ultimate really quickly. He hits pretty hard and he uses like poison damage. Uh, I'm wondering, is this a single target? It is. And how much health does he heal off of that? So he almost healed back to full off of that, so that was actually kind of rough. Um, not sure. If we just keep igniting him with Meliodas, we should be pretty alright with this. He doesn't seem that bad, we just need to make sure we do like a ton of burst damage, or else he's just going to use his ultimate to heal back up. So we might be able to kill this next turn. So 
So let's try this right here and see how much damage this does. What do we got? Okay, cool. So he actually wasn't that bad. That was probably one of the easier of the three star battles. Which then again, I guess it just depends on what kind of teams you're using for each individual fight and stuff like that. So just kind of play around with some of it. If it doesn't work, obviously you can just you can still use those characters. So just try some other characters or sub them out for this or that. So yeah. All right. So uh, I think they're still doing the spontaneous mission thing, which actually ends tomorrow, right? In, uh, like as of the day I'm recording this. So don't worry too much about those because I don't think those are a permanent thing. But uh, yeah, so you can see we hit the third battle and everything. Uh, we got a lot of uh, stuff. Like I think that was over 30% worth of, you know, gauge right here that we just filled up. So let me see which boss this one is or if it's the same boss. So it's not the same boss. I think I'm pretty much out of red characters at this point. So we're just going to do a level two fight. Um, and I don't think that's going to quite fill it up. So... But we should have some blue characters and everything like that ready to go. So let me do this one and then uh, we'll see how full the gauge is after that. Okay, so we just finished that fight. Uh, I'm assuming we're not going to be completely full. We're probably going to be like a couple of percent off, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we're so close. That's almost that's almost a waste. You're probably better off doing a whole bunch of like two, two level twos. And then like if you have the people for it, go for level threes. But, uh, like, I'm sure I could have optimized that a little bit better to hit that threshold. Um, well, I mean, we did level twos and then a level three. So, I mean, I'm going to have to do a level one right here if I really want to get away with this as, you know, best I can. But we're still wasting a, uh, a turn over here on the, on the rewards beater and everything like that. So, I don't know. Just kind of play with a little bit, figure out what what best suits you but uh yeah so this after this match we actually should be pretty good and we will be able to fight one of our own teams so uh, let me do this one really quick and we'll see what that's like okay so this is going to be a prime example of getting to use the same characters so i failed this one uh, I'm obviously going to have to mess with this team a little bit. Running Galland and uh, that Elizabeth is not a very good combination considering uh, she doesn't do very good and then uh, Galland makes it to where he has to hit him. So uh, we'll just go right back into it, but we're going to change our stuff. But you can see none of these characters are locked, uh, which is the main reason that I wanted to show you that. So yeah, we're doing good. We're doing fine. Okay. So, we just beat that. You can see that we actually gain uh, the Illusion Amber right here at the very end. So now that it's 100% full, we can run over here to this. And uh, I think it's going to use one of the teams that has your best CC. Uh, I'm not positive on that. So we're going to go with probably my better team. I think we'll put Demon Meliodas on. And instead of Jericho, we'll run Lilia for the extra pierce rate. We'll change their association, because why not? So we're, we're well over CC at the moment. Uh, I'm assuming this is this is probably either going to be our Escanor team that we used, or the team that we used against the 3 star. Or the level 3. Uh, actually, it was just the one, or it's the one that we... Now, it's a little bit of a, a mix. No, this is the one that we used against the three star, I'm pretty sure. Or the level three, because it's got Demon Meliodas and the Red Arthur. I thought that was Blue Arthur for some reason. Um, so yeah, nothing too crazy. We're pretty much just gonna go, go at it like we normally would. Actually, I think I'll do Attack Seal. But yeah, this isn't too bad. It's going to use one of the teams, uh, and I, I don't, as far as I know, it doesn't look like it strays too far away from uh, the, the team that you actually use. Like, I'm pretty sure it's an exact clone of the team you used. So I don't think it's going to, like, mix and match the other characters that you've used. But, I mean, I don't know. I've only, this is only the third week that I've been playing, so there could be stuff that I don't know yet. 
obviously, if you if you watch somebody who's played this on JP and stuff, they probably have a lot more information than I do. But I'm just giving you my you know my view of it for, as a global player, which I've I've done a, a fair bit of research and everything like that just for this video. So I don't think that they can do that, but I wouldn't be surprised. So you can see, this is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Like as long as you're not using all of your best characters on one team, you're not going to have to worry about, you know, having to have much trouble fighting yourself at the end as long as you save a couple characters for that. So you can see, this is the reason why you want to do uh, the Illusion Ambers as, uh, as much as possible because you're going to get the Engraving Stones, which is used to make your UR gear. Uh, it takes 10 of those stones to make one piece of UR gear, so it is kind of pricey. But uh, I think I'm running out of a fair bit of characters at this point. Well, I, I can't check it right there, but uh, we're I think I'm pretty much just going to be doing uh, a whole bunch of level 1s and stuff like that to get the remaining rewards. So let me run through a couple of these battles and everything, and I'll show you what happens whenever uh, whenever we get finished. Okay, so this is going to be our last last round. We're on our... This should be our ninth match. So I've got a pretty halfway decent team here. We're just going to try to get as much damage off as possible. Actually, I think this will ignite. So we're going to do that. Hey, the only reason I'm showing in this one is just because I want you to see what happens when the, the battle actually ends. I don't imagine this will take too long, so hopefully it's not that bad. If it is, I'll end up just cutting some of this out. But Elizabeth should die pretty easily. Move some of this stuff around to try to get some ult gauges. I probably should have moved kings, so that way I could have got another old gauge on him because I think uh, oh well it doesn't matter I was gonna say if he uh, kills Elizabeth there it's gonna give us old gauge on King but she's dead either way so I think that might be yeah that's old gauge for both I think we're good here all right so we're gonna throw the ignite on more ignite and then we'll do an attack card And then we'll be able to ult next round. I don't imagine he's gonna kill all three of us in one ult, but <laughs> you never know. That's a lot of damage. Alright, we're good though. Okay, so we'll do this and this just to help secure the kill. Nice. Alright, so. That's that over with. You can see we hit the last milestone there. We get our last bit of anvils, and then I think it's just gonna kick us straight out. Because now that we're now that we're completely done, like with our ninth battle, uh, you can see it says training complete, returning to the tavern. So that's pretty much it. You want to make sure that you're trying to optimize your runs as much as possible to get as many of the uh, illusion ambers done. But obviously it just, it takes time. It takes a lot of like prep work and you got to build up your box and stuff like that because you're not going to be able to rely on equipment to carry you through some of that stuff. So just, uh, just make sure you're, you know, not investing all of your stuff into like just a couple of characters. Um, but, you know, make sure you're going through and, you know, just improving your box overall. That's why my box CC is so high now, which I mean, I know that's not like crazy high. It goes all the way up to 2 million. But, uh, yeah, that's the reason why my box CC is, you know, on the higher end. It's just because I've been working on getting all these, you know, characters built up. You know, when I was running through the reduced stamina stuff to get my equipment, I was, uh, I wasn't really farming for specific equipment. I know some people do for, you know, making their sets and everything like that, but I was pretty much just running through and, uh, like, say I needed, or say I was wanting to upgrade my level three characters, I would go through, see which one I needed, I would pick this one, and then I would go to location, and, uh, I would just farm that stage over and over again if I got 
uh, equipment from it. Obviously, I would upgrade it and salvage it and everything like that, uh, as you would do for the reduced stamina and everything like that. But I was pretty much running it to get awakening materials as well. So, um, yeah. Just level up your proxy seat. That's really all it takes to get decent rewards out of that. So, uh, hopefully this was insightful or, uh, you know, helpful in some way. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to try and answer them for you. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll try to look into it as to, you know, not only better your knowledge, but to better myself. So I can do this, you know, more efficiently in the future. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.